Greetings everyone and welcome to this episode of Let's Create Something with Trapcode Tao. Today we're going to look at a really old principle which is called the uh, Archimedes screw pump and uh, it's a really old principle uh, that is attributed to this guy here. It looks very serious. He's Archimedes. This guy uh, lived more than 200 years before Jesus Christ and uh, well you can read the about his life uh, it's pretty interesting aside from inventing the screw pump he he invented some kind of a claw uh, that was installed on ships and that was kind of a military weapon that would tip other ships aside in the water he it is told that he used uh, the power of the sun uh, using mirrors to reflect heat rays on enemy boats that would burn uh, I think Midbusters tried this some while ago and uh, figured out that it might not have worked as well as the stories tell. But anyway, when he died uh, at the siege of Syracuse, despite that the uh, Roman soldiers who had captured him had strict orders not to kill him, uh, it is told that as he was captured, he was drawing uh, circle patterns on the on the ground, and what he said, his last words were, "Please don't disturb my circles." And that, in, don't know why, infuriated the Roman soldier and killed him, uh, despite the fact that he knew he had the order not to kill him because the uh, emperor knew that Archimedes was really important because of all this knowledge. He was a mathematician, a physicist, an engineer, an inventor, and an astronomer. So so let, let me explain something to you. In the process of um, making my dailies uh, GIF animation, sometimes I don't have unlimited inspiration. Sometimes I look on at the works of others. It gives me new ideas. Sometimes I, sorry about that, completely rip off some thing that I like, try to practice uh, my skills, getting it to be looking as good as it does, but going through my own path, understanding it, and I think it's good practice. Like, so sometimes I just look at a uh, good old mathematical principle, like the Archimedes screw. I was searching about information on that. I saw this GIF and I find it super cool, just because of the shape of this helix. There's just rotating, and it has a uh, very interesting looping visual properties to it so um yeah i think it's a good practice uh, if you're like me i consider myself like some kind of mathematically impaired person uh, it would be really pretentious of me to uh, teach you about mathematical principles uh, assuming that i know all about it because i really don't i'm really far from being a math expert but i really like um, geometry and I really like like feeling the math more than understanding it and it's the same thing with music I like to play music I play guitar I don't necessarily know the theory I don't even know where's a G on my guitar but I play to the ear and uh, I, I since I don't totally understand it there's some kind of mystery in there which kind of keeps me interested in, in progressing through it if I, somebody told me all about it, then I wouldn't be necessarily interested uh, in discovering because discovering is the interesting part. So let me uh, get on with it because I'm talking a lot right now. So this is gonna be a, a nothing uh, really, uh, we're not gonna learn a breakthrough here and we're gonna just uh, go around and do it step by step. And through the course of that, uh, we'll see if you, uh, little techniques, uh, work, workflow tips when using Trapcode Tao. Sometimes it's not, it's not entirely intuitive, so we're gonna look at how to um, combine different looks. Like in this example here, we have the wireframe and we have the flat low poly look and some other elements also have some reflection on them. So uh, let's uh, not lose more time and let's get to it. So I'm gonna create a new project and once again, I might uh, do some back and forth there, uh, come back to previous step and explain uh, why I do things like why 
uh, this order of doing and why uh, doing it this way and not this way. So sometimes uh, it's uh, fun to know what errors you could be uh, directing yourself through when you're, you're in specific certain workflows. So let's create a new solid and uh, we're going to make this 1080 by 1080, so a square. And uh, we're going to make a new solid, control Y. So we're going to call this one tau. It can be of any color, it doesn't matter. And we're going to fetch our little tau effect here. I'm going to apply this on there. And uh, first thing we're going to make our helix. So uh, a helix is kind of a circle, multiple circles. But as we would draw the circle, we would go up. So the circle would kind of start to be like a spring. Uh, let me do it visually because explaining that is like not really intuitive to understand. So let's create a new light object which we're going to use to uh, create our geometry. So Control Alt Shift L will open up this panel here and uh, we can, we must in fact call it Tau all in caps to uh, have it work and uh, all these settings here they're kind of at default except for the cone angle. Oh and we must choose the spotlight, then we're going to have access to those settings. The cone angle I set to zero just because uh, visual aids and in interface, uh, but it doesn't have any impact on how the light is dropping geometry. So let's create that and let's hit P so we can access the position property and let's make it 540, 540 and zero. So that's the center point of our composition. And uh, let's create a simple null hierarchy. So this is what I like to do when we're working with track code tau. I create at least three nulls to attach my tau light to. So first, let's uh, pick with this to that, and let's pick with this to that, and let's pick with this to that. So this will be the tau light, or this is the object, uh, After Effect object tau use to interact. Uh, and this null, the first null we uh, connected it, is going to be our scale null. So with, with this one, we can uncheck this and unproportionately scale it. And this is going to be our tau move. So this is where we're going to apply our expressions to make it uh, move around in space and draw our geometry. And this one, we're simply going to call it uh, tau main and uh, this is the top null we're gonna keep it on top so at any time we can just move around our whole structure and uh, it won't mess around the keyframes or anything so let's start ahead um, first of all we're gonna uh, use uh, what we what I like to use to create circle path so I'm gonna Put the link in the description down below. This is what I the, the patch of code I use most often to create a circle with expression. You can also create spirals if you want using this from Ewan Smith. Thank you, Mr. Ewan. You've been of great help many times in my life. So uh, this code that I just copied here, Control C, we're gonna paste it on the position property of the tau move null. So so let's get on the position all click on the stopwatch and control V. So we're going to paste the code right in here. And we might want to drag this down to see more of what's written down there. And the first thing that we realize is that our center point is not in the right place. This is our the geometry that we're actually drawing. And uh, wait a minute, we're going to also disable our path generator because we're using our light. And let's bring it to the center. So since it's attached to this uh, null, we can center it on the zero point here. So this is in the code where uh, the center point is specified. We're simply going to put zero, zero, and zero. And as uh, soon as we do that, it's going to get back right where we want it. All right. So uh, we have uh, some properties here, the radius and the angle. Let's make some uh, custom expression sliders, which we can connect. Uh, that way we're gonna be able to scrub these values instead of always typing it down there in the code. It's gonna be much more 
practical. So let's type down 300 here, and this is gonna be the radius. Let's name it. And uh, let's just lock this down here so we keep it there visually. And then let's get over here, and I'm hitting shift and left arrow here to select the, the value here. And uh, let's grab the pick whip and connect it to the slider we just named radius. So right there, it doesn't change anything visually, but now I have access to this little scrubber here, which uh, is really more efficient than having to type it down down here. And we can do the same with the angle, and the angle is kind of a value of based on 360 degrees. So what I like to do for that, instead of a usual uh, custom slider, I use an angle control. So it's got a nice radio button, I like those. And uh, let's uh, set it to 200, so it keeps the same as the default, and let's do the same. We're gonna grab this here, take the pick whip, and connect it to the angle control we got here. So let's, let's figure out things now. So let's start by making sure that we draw our circle correctly. So right now, that's not a circle. We don't have uh, enough segments for it to look like a circle. So let's get in tau there. And uh, since this has been locked down here, uh, if it's not certain that you'll see the tau effect once you select the layer, let me just close that one. So this one is locked down. I want to keep it locked down. So I'm going to select the tau and, and it doesn't appear there. So let's just hit F3 and then it's gonna bring it up here and we still keep this over there. We can bring it up here if we want. Whoops, no, not there. But uh, we can bring it right there. Sorry for the mess up. And uh, so there we have access to that all the time. Uh, let's get in the segment section over there and we have 25 segments by default. Let's increase that. And as soon as we do that, we can see that it more and more and more become like a smooth circle. All right. So let's put down 360 segments. And let's look at the uh, and, um, wireframe already. So right there, we have uh, in the rendering option, the last section of Tao, we have the, se the second pass here, which we can enable and we can uh, enable the wire frame. Let's choose the color for that and we'll make it black. So lots and lots of lines there. We want to make something that's kind of low poly. So to make that, it's uh, kind of crucial that we reduce the amount of segments. But as we do that, it's kind of still, it doesn't have enough uh, segments. So uh, let's um, let's look at let's look at the numbers here. So we start at three hundred because that's our radius. And as we move through time, and we can see here, and we can also click on there to activate uh, the visual aid there. So let's count how many rotation it does until it arrives to three hundred to the frame three hundred, which is the last frame uh, in the, the the creation of. Uh, the geometry. So let's make a marker here, shift zero, I can get back here anytime. So we start here and then we make one turn and like one turn is, is done at approximately 54 frames. So that means that it turns something like six, six times before it gets there. So that's might not be that, that might not be a uh, the correct amount we want. Let's let's try to have it just rotate once. So first goal that we set for ourselves, at frame zero, we're at 300. And at frame 300, we must also be at uh, 300 or minus 300. So it's kind of, let's make sure that we, between these 300 frames, we have only one circle being drawn to start with. So in order to do that, uh, we're gonna get back to the, the angle control. So as we reduce that, it will 
change the uh, the speed of the rotation. So let's see. Let's try an arbitrary number now, 50 maybe. So we start there and it takes a little bit more time before uh, our circle is complete. So right now we're like one revolution and a little bit more than one. So before we had six times the rotation between those, th this amount of frame, now we have a little bit more than one. So let's find out which number we can put here to make it sort that it's really just one loop. So the number is 36. And that actually makes sense because uh, even if I'm not that good at maths, I can figure out that 36 uh, and uh, relatively to uh, 10. So 10 times 36 is 360, so 360 degrees, aha. So that's, we know that it is the number we wanna put there. So that's one whole uh, revolution. And right here we have this small gap here. And depending on what we're trying to do, it might be uh, bothering a little bit. But uh, in our case, I think that we, we don't need to worry that much. But let's see if we put like 36.75, maybe we can just get it to close here and have a little bit less of a mess up for the moment. So maybe not like 36. We have this little gap here. Let me hit Control Shift H to hide that. And if we would to have like an crazy amount of segments would also fix it. But since we're using the wireframe rendering, we want to keep it at low uh, poly. So uh, and then let's try to, to find the number that'll kind of make it seem more like a close, but that's, I'm not that much worried about that for the moment. So uh, next step, let's we have one revolution. Uh, let's offset it in space as well. So while the rotation is occurring, let's move it in the distance on the z-axis. Instead of this being the main, we're gonna like call it move keyframe, and we're gonna create another one on top of that, and this is gonna be the main. So see, I'm just readjusting now that I'm figuring stuff out because I want to add keyframe but I don't want to add on uh, the, ch the child level of the where the one that moves I want its parent to uh, be keyframeable but I still want and uh, to have one on top of all uh, that would never have any keyframe which I can use to move it everything and of course it has to be connected to it so I always want to be able to move everything without worrying about any keyframes being there. So let's let's keyframe uh, that and uh, let's click on the stopwatch on frame zero and let's get to uh, frame 300. We can, we can tap zero on the keyboard because we've made a marker there. All right, so uh, let's push it on the Z. So might not refresh depending on the version of After Effects you have. Uh, so uh, if doesn't re refresh let's just hit control alt front slash so that's gonna purge the memory it's the same as if we would go here purge uh, also I have an older version of After Effects you might have CC and it might be a little different or it might just update by itself directly so we're looking at our circle that is being drawn in a full loop and at the same time it offsets on Z so we're seeing it go in the distance. Uh, let's look at it from this side. So let's create ourselves a camera, control alt shift C, and let's keep it at 50 millimeter because that's the default of After Effects. And let's create a null, control alt shift Y. This null is gonna be our dolly. So it's gonna be kind of, or should I call it target cam? It's gonna be less confusion with that term, I think. And uh, this is going to be like the where our uh, we're going to attach our camera to that. Let's make it 3D. So this is going to always be at point zero, 
and uh, if we rotate that we'll rotate around our our thing all right so let's move it let's rotate it 90 degrees uh, minus, minus 90 degrees uh, so we can look at it from the side and uh, there it's a little bit too much on the side there let's center it back and since we're reversed we're dragging on the the left to make it move on the right we're so we're moving the z on the main and because since we've changed the camera angle uh, the x becomes the z on this instance all right so now that's not yet a, a screw but it's starting to look more like it let's make it for sides so now we have a uh, some kind of a square thing and let's uh, uncheck this the chamfer is kind of a little beveling here that we can shut down and uh, let's also make this flat so let's find which angle is uh, is it that we want to get so this is not the one we want to get this would be more like uh, those crazy things sonic would run around those things anyway so let's use uh, that one the size Y and uh, it's gonna make it thinner just on like we want it all right and uh, also the tessellation now is set to triangle uh, when working with wireframes sometimes the look we want is this quads so it's just gonna remove the diagonal line that makes all of our segments visible uh, triangular so let's uh, set that to quad and uh, we can increase this uh, down in the rendering we can increase the wireframe to have it a little bit bolder right there all right so we have one twist now occurring on uh, the tau uh, move there let's let's have it now that we know that uh, we have it straight one rotation There, I'm hitting you on the. I'm selecting the layer here and hit you, not not you as a person, but you, the letter on the keyboard. Um, I would never hit you, I swear. So right there, two hundred ninety-nine point nine seven point nine. It's not entirely true that we have the perfect loop there. So if we want to have the perfect perfect loop, we've got to have three hundred and and zero. As values there so let's look at let's look at this once again so yeah 36 36 makes it exactly the same there all right so now uh, we want to have this rotate three times we're kind of gonna make a, our screw now so let's make another uh, let's make another slider control there on the tau move layer and let's add a slider control sorry for that let's expression control slider control is this going to be our multiplier and the number we're going to put down here is going to be the the number of turns we want to make so we we're having one revolution now and we want to have three so let's create this and uh, let's go back to the code all right so the angle this time multiplied by our angle value makes in sort that we have one perfect circle so let's multiply by our multiplier so we we just add this at the end of the line the star sign which is multiplication uh, and uh, let's drag our pick whip to the multiplier that will add this line of code there and as we click elsewhere we'll see that it doesn't make just one rotation but it's gonna make one two and three rotations so now it looks a little bit more like a screw which makes me happy.
Now we have this uh, fun radius settings here. Radius setting. We can always come back here and mess around it. Oh, look at that. If I have a really, really small radius, a screw is looking a lot like DNA. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Interesting. Let's have it 150, something like that. And uh, let's pull off with our camera. So hitting C to cycle between the camera tools, I'm gonna just pull off a little bit and maybe uh, have some uh, rotation on the on the Z here to make it straight. And let's also pick up the camera rotation tool here so we can have it change its angle. All right, so now we have our uh, screw, the helix going up. Let's make our cylinder that's gonna go through. So how can we make just a piece of cylinder and uh, have it not be necessarily a path? Can we do that? Let's try. So control alt shift L, we're gonna make another light and this one let's call it tau cube. We're also gonna make it a spotlight and hit okay. And that, well, look at that. I think that's a bug. So now I've created this uh, light object, which is a cube. And if it was only that like normal path, it wouldn't mess up the transformation property of that. So that's something I think must be uh, addressed in future Tao version. So now that this is a cube, ah, the transformation here, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Let's see if we can go uh, on our scale thing. And uh, so we can actually scale it from here. So that's why I make these uh, hier hierarchies here. So what I like to do is keep this at 100 and 100 and 100 everywhere. So the things that we don't rescale will uh, keep their normal proportions and ratios so now I just increase this value here so it it flattens this axis it has the same exact effect that it, if I would change the general setting here but it allows us to keep those at 100 so let's move our cube in the middle of our comp making sure that it lies right at the center and let's hit uh, control alt o open up this auto orientation panel and let's set it to off. Um, that's a square. Let's uh, hit control Y. We're gonna j just for a simple geometric object like Tau cube, it's not a path. We just need one because we're never gonna draw anything with that kind of geometry. It's just a simple, seg a seg simple object we're uh, positioning there. So let's attach this to that, make sure it's 3D. So we just want one to uh, unproportionally scale it. So this is not the right way we want to scale it, and this is not the this is not the right way either. This is the right one. And once again, it's uh, it's not really intuitive. I know because I'm dropping it down to increase it, which is might be a little bit weird, but that's what we want to do, and we have uh, the result that we want. So let's keep it like that. And also, it's cube, but we. we we would like it to have more sides. Um, and since it's a cube, well, it, it, it's not affected by the amount of sides uh, we change here. It won't affect that. So to make it as a cylinder, we must hard code the number of sides on the light object. Let me show you how to do that. We're gonna simply type down SID column, the amount of sides. So uh, let's see, let's try 24 sides at first and we must refresh uh, purging the memory so control alt front slash and right there now it's it's a nice cylinder how cool all right all right all right um so next thing we want to do let's make that rotate mm -hmm. let's see how uh, we want that to be rotating so we, we don't want to <laughs> this this is interesting but that's not we, what we want to do. We want to. We don't want to rotate the segments. We want to rotate the whole object. 
and since it's a path that we're drawing, we don't really have any way of uh, rotating it. I mean, the path generator here, we have uh, this, we can displace it, we can rotate it uh, independently from anything, but this is not the auto-generated path. Same thing with the mask here. If we would have drawn this with a mask, there would be other options that we don't have necessarily access to, and we wouldn't be able to hard code any uh, special commands in the light object since we wouldn't have light objects, so that's why we don't use mask right now. But mask also ha allows you to rotate uh, your object, your drawn object with it. But lights, it doesn't have this, 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 if, if, like, one thing that I would really like Tao to have is in this path from Tao light uh, section to have the same as we have here, the rotate and the center position. That would be great, but we don't have that. I want to rotate this. Let's see how we can do that. So sometimes we can get away with using the world transform. But right now, like this is, this is what we want to have. All right. So we, we could, if this is what the, where was the only thing that we uh, would be doing, we could get away just uh, setting keyframes on that and uh, like one on frame zero and let's go to a little bit further, so 90 frames. And if we put down 360 here, it's the same uh, end result here, but in between the interpolation, we have our uh, infinite looping motion right there. But, this is not the way we're gonna we're, we want to do it in this situation. Why? Because uh, we want to add other things that won't be rotating. So this little platform and the balls that we're gonna add uh, afterwards, like uh, I had in my example. Well, if we do that, like let's let's add it. Let's add one. Uh, cube. I can't type anymore. So this is a tau cube. And let's just let's just duplicate this cylinder and uh, remove that so we get it back as a cube and we can just simply move it down there and we want to rotate it uh, or we want to simply scale it like such so we want to have later our little platform here. And I've, since we've changed the camera angle, now we can all, we know that we're specifically at the right place with this, just moving the, the axis there. But see, now it's cool, it's, but it's rotating with it. I, we want to exclude this item from rotating with the stuff. So that entirely prevents us from using the uh, the world transform uh, to animate that. So how would we rotate this thing? Well, there's one way and it's not really intuitive. I admit it. What if we would to we were to repeat our object and in the repeater we have a rotation property. So just if we repeat it one time and the the master, let's call it, what what's gonna be copied? Let's push it out of the frame like entirely. Um, so position like let's let's push it away like we don't see it anymore. So that's our repetition is over there, and our uh, normal object is over there. So. Let's frame it on this one. So let's get back to the world transform and we're not gonna animate those keyframe, but we're gonna here change it on the Z. So re let's recenter this thing. So now our master object is kind of outside uh, the range, but our initial object is there. But we don't have our cylinder anymore and we don't have our cube since um, Tau objects like this, like special Tau cube lights, uh, they, they, they're not included in repeaters by default. So we have to hard code that as well. So we wanna repeat the cylinder, but not the platform. So let's, re let's add this rep one and let's refresh that. 
So our cylinder is there now. Uh, let me make sure that you understand. So um, right now, this is the copy of our object and our object is outside of the frame. So getting back at the repeater options here. And if we want to make sure that like we, we can pick up this value here and uh, add it down there. So uh, yeah, we've got the world rotate on the first repeater, which we can now use. So we can keyframe that since we copied only one instance of our master object, the, the rotation on the repetition won't affect what we don't want to rotate. Ah, that's kind of clever, isn't it? So l let's uh, go to frame zero and uh, let's make a keyframe and let's go to frame 90 and let's uh, make it 360 degrees. So now we are back to our animation, but we're doing it slightly different way. And let's get back, uh, let's get our platform back. So this thing here, we're just going to bring it back there. And since we're not using the world rotation property to rotate our thing, it's not affected by the rotation, which is exactly what we want. Hooray! Problem solved. <laughs> All right. Uh, so um, that's one thing. So let's add some balls, but first let's uh, make this a little less stretched. So we have to move a keyframe here. And what did we, we moved it 900. Let's have it 600 instead. And that's a little bit more like it. So now uh, I'm gonna simply move the main right there. And what if we wanna change the initial angle of that? So we want to start, we want it to start like, for example, we want, we want it to start here. Well, how do we do that? Not a big problem. So right here, we're in the middle of the rotation. This is uh, 200 degrees, All right? So this is what we want as uh, our first frame. So let's create a keyframe here. Delete both other ones. Let's bring that at the beginning. Let's go on our frame 90. And let's simply add 360 degrees to that. So now we've changed our initial angle. All right. So let's add some balls. I'm going to hit uh, Control Shift. Alt L to make it one more light. And this one we're gonna call it Tau Sphere. This is like the Tau Cube, which we made a cylinder with, but it's gonna be a sphere, as its name accurately says. So by default, uh, let's bring it at zero, at the zero coordinate. But remember, we moved uh, our zero coordinate, so we would need to bring this down. So the, the true center, like if we want to make sure that the sphere is at the real center of the composition, this is the value that we have to move it. Or is it not the, ne the negative? So yeah, th this would uh, bring it right at the center. So let's bring it down. And right now it's a little too big. Uh, let's, let's reduce its size. So that's that's also another uh, another advantage of keeping all these at 100. Now that I'm creating a sphere, if I would have uh, changed that, for example, it wouldn't change my sphere because they are not uh, influenced by that. Uh, that is, if we don't have to make to make these influenceable by that, I think we have to art code. Uh, Let's hard code it in the sphere. TFM1. 
and that will uh, force it to be affected by these kinds of transformation and it doesn't it, it, it doesn't well I'm talking I'm talking about stuff that doesn't apply anyway let's in turn off the oh look at that so I'm I want to turn off the auto orientation on that but as I do so uh, I, I, I deleted the E there that's why it makes this disappear all right so uh, no problem there let's reduce the size of our sphere so with the radius it doesn't it doesn't work because there's one prior step we had to do before let's get in the paths from Tau lights and the size from radius is not activated simply check this on and from this point uh, we can reduce the size of our sphere directly with the radius interesting so uh, let's move it right to where it would seem to be uh, pulled by those things and rolling on the floor so right there it hits the, kind of hits the ground let's move it a bit forward and let's put it right in between there so for the moment we, ha we have one uh, sphere there for the moment it's still uh, not moving around right but let's make it reflective so let's go in the material in setting and uh, let's activate the image based lighting which will allow us to have some reflection so let's pull in one of the built-in reflections I like to use the graffiti ruin or uh, the bus garage uh, or, or maybe we can try the industrial room for this might look great so right there we have it affecting everything maybe that's cool maybe that that's what we want but maybe we just want to have it on the spheres and not on those other elements how would we do that there's no option in there we have to hard code it once again so the special code for that let's go on all our other light uh, then the sphere and in them we're gonna type down uh, ref zero ref zero it's kind of self explanatory it means reflection off reflection false so let's go to the cube here ref zero and as we pull them out of the reflection They'll, they'll kind of turn uh, darker so that that's the thing um, let's see what are the, the color of those lights they are pure white so that's that's uh, one thing what if we want to keep them uh, let's just increase the diffusion so the diffusion is affecting uh, our general light here But let's bring it at a, at a level where we would uh, see the sphere. So the sphere is turning out to be real bright when we increase the texture. So what we're going to do to uh, compensate is uh, simply we're going to change uh, the, the shade of this. So let's, let's set it to a much darker color. And... Uh, it's going on here it's almost dark and still appears to be ah, the reflection is way too strong so let's reduce that so around this amount here and let's try the smooth rendering so smooth rendering flat rendering our sphere is like every segment it's got really big uh, representation of the reflection in it but let's put that as smooth and then we see all the environment on the sphere uh, with the uh, wireframe on top of that and our other elements seem to uh, react as well to that we can increase the 
intensity of ambient occlusion a little bit to work our shadows there. So depending on what, if, if what we created is much bigger than the default things that we create in After Effects, we can increase the scale here. And if the things we create are much smaller, then we can reduce it. I always try to mess around a little bit with this to find the best combination. So also uh, by default, it's set to multi-sample. And uh, when we want more detail, uh, ambient occlusion, it seems that we have some kind of a white uh, noise stripe. So let's set that to super sample. It's gonna help with that. All right, not bad, we have that now. That's interesting. Um, let's add even more light details to that. So we're gonna combine uh, that. And also remember, we have four to five segments here. We can always play around with this number here to uh, change the amount of lines that we have in our objects. And also the sphere here it doesn't affect that, but if we want to change the number, like if we want the, the grid the wire to be, to, to scale larger, let's simply reduce the amount of sides there. So uh, I'm not sure exactly what is the default number of side in a sphere like that, but let's try 12. See, it's less than that. So we have um, less uh, wires on this. So that's interesting. Uh, let's look at our uh, material options. And let's activate the Tau Lumi light. So now we, we're spreading some diffusion on there. So let's shut off the ambient light to make sure that doesn't affect anything. And uh, let's create a new light. So control alt shift L. This one is gonna be called Tau Lumi, all in caps. And let's make it a point light. And let's hit okay. So now this is uh, custom light that will affect on top of our uh, of our reflection SIBL so let's see where it, where is it now right there let's make some sort of a some sort of a backlight now remember that X is Z and ZX is X and also that we've uh, moved around our center point, so we must definitely uh, push it back. And also, let's simply rotate around just to see where we are. So we, as we rotate around, we'll see our uh, master object lying back there. We've hidden it so we can rotate our thing. Anyway. So let's not lose that much time with the lights. I'm gonna go back to the diffusion strand. We can uncheck that since we don't have anything animated in the environment. And let's reduce the strength here. So let's actually make it darker so we can come up and really customly uh, choose where we have the light. So let's have some kind of top top side backlight there and let's duplicate that and let's bring it down here so we can kind of have another kind of light coming up here and this one let's reduce its intensity so it's not as strong and maybe just pull, pull it in a little bit and if we would to go in the negative value it, it allows us to make more shadows which is also really interesting so let's keep this one at it's kind of nice to have some shadows coming down there. And uh, let's have another one. I'm grabbing the first one because that's not a shadow light. And let's bring it uh, someplace else just to fill a little bit. So that uh, might be some interesting lighting a little bit more interesting than what we get 
by default. So last thing we're gonna do is move our balls. So let's move our balls. Let's do it with you know, our first ball there. So this is the sphere. Where are you, sphere? There it is. Let's make a null to that. And let's attach our sphere to the null. And let's make sure that it is 3D. So the null will be right at the zero point and we'll be able to move that around. So um, let's keyframe that. So we don't need it to go all the way up into uh, the distance. And let's make sure that it's on the other level. So let's simply animate it this going up there and uh, and that'll be sufficient for what we need so I'm gonna add a keyframe on the null first thing there I'm gonna go so third of uh, 90 frames is 30 because we have three balls it's gonna move there so at frame 30 which is the third it is going to be moving up so I won't see it and oh that's not what I want to change so let's let's pick up this let's bring this back there so we want to animate the Z value and I'm moving the second one so I don't see it and if that's the case for you let's just grab both of them and drag it to see what's the value so minus 70 12 but we don't want to actually do that so we undo this step and then we grab just the second one and minus 72 purge memory and there it is right where we want it to be so let's actually make it follow all the way up so minus 70, 12 multiplied by 3, will it bring it? Yeah, so that's where we want it to be. So let's copy that. And we're just gonna copy the sphere, and we're gonna leave uh, the, the we're gonna leave this to do its job. So let's simply move it on the Z here for our second ball, and it's going well. But oh yeah, before we do that, let's uh, manage the rotation of this. So now it seems like it's just sliding there, which might be something that could happen depending on the kind of material and surface that we have here but we want this to be rolling so let's see this is not the right direction this is also not the right one but this is the right one so let's go around with X and let's find uh, what speed of a rotation that we need so let's start with one full rotation and let's see how it looks like Ah, it seemed pretty right. All right, let's give it like that. So now that it's rotating, we can simply copy that sphere, move it up on the Z, and it's also going to be rotating up. All right. So that's, that's going to be the one that's falling. So we want to make this one fall. And we're going to make another one appear. So the middle one is our reference one. But the, now let's uh, choose what, let's decide what happens with these other ones. So let's pick up the, the little platform we made here. And let's move it on the Z to make and sort that it will be positioned where our, we want our ball to drop there so and 
I mean, we wanted to be completely fallen by that point, so maybe we want to bring that a little bit. So right there, it is going to go to the tip of the platform, and as it kind of gets over there, we, we want to take over the, the we want to keyframe the sphere itself to go down. Can we can we do that? Let's let's try to do it. So let's get, create a keyframe there on in the sphere, and let's bring it downwards. So I'm gonna simply grab both of those to see where it must be. So 850, let's see, and on the X. Oh well, let's. See. 850 so not realistic for the moment it's gonna fall kind of horizontally because it's falling straight but depending on our camera angle so what we might want to do in fact what we must do is uh, also offset it on the X here so until it kind of becomes like a straight line here and let's refresh that and let's look at what happens with our sphere it's getting near and it pushes down and it kind of still have this this uh, this motion this angle and it's still very linear but uh, let's move it even more to the side and let's even make it curve to that so let's see what we're, we'll get if that's gonna make it a little bit better oh and we don't want it to so that's a little too much. Let's see like that. And once again, this might be some other ways to do that that are more efficient. But this simply, this is the most simple, I would think. So let's keep that as straight as can as it can be, and let's. Let's look at the feel of the fall. So it So it actually needs to go almost in a straight line. And I think that we kind of messed up the angle. So let's delete that keyframe and let's start over again. And this is 850. And let's make sure that we don't have any handles on this. So let's set that to linear. And let's move it on the X. So let's go from, from there. And, and we're just gonna test right there. Maybe a little. So a little bit more. And let's quickly look at it from another angle, like just to see how it feels. Oh, that's that's not actually not what we want. So we want this to keep straight. Let's refresh. And now it's going right where we want it. Oh, now I messed up my camera angle 
and I've I didn't uh, I did purge so I kind of I can't undo it let's try to reposition it and now it's like it's really it's got to go down let's uh, let's look at that from this angle So yeah, in fact, we really <laughs> do want this to be moved on the Z axis and not on the X. So that was my mistake. And now we're doing, we're going too far. So it goes back in. That's not what we want. And that's also not what we want to do. I'm going to go back there. it there in that, in that direction and right there now let's not overdo that but we're getting closer Let's give it a little, little bit of moment or momentum. So something falling will kind of have some gravity to it. And let's see. Can we also make a little curve? Like, let's see if this handle here, if we do like that. Like just this little curving motion to to make sure that it doesn't go through our platform, and also we're gonna easy ease those keyframe, and I won't hit F9 because it's just gonna stop the recording. But let's get in the keyframe assistant and easy ease. So let's look at that by default. So. We want it to go really slow at first and accelerate as it drops. So that's how gravity works, I think. So that, it's not entirely perfect yet, but it looks a little bit better for the course of what we want to do. All right. So we start there. We have two balls. One is going to fall off. And we have to make our third, which is going to take the place of uh, this one so we can close our loop. That's the only thing that we have left to do. So let's duplicate uh, not this one that's falling, but the first sphere that we created as a reference. And uh, let's make sure that its mm, amount of size are 12. One little trick here if you want to, I want to duplicate my objects, but I don't want to have this incremental uh, number when I duplicate so we can simply put like a dummy letter here just, just a, so then we duplicate and it doesn't we don't have to manually go uh, fix that all right so this is our third ball it is rotating and uh, let's move it on the Z simply let's go let's go right there and I think we're gonna have to also change our angle of how things are going there eh? because right this let's, let's start with moving it right there and since that's it's the null that's moving uh, it's always gonna like we don't have to worry about the amount of pixel that it it goes we just have to worry about let's make a marker here on frame zero and let's make one on frame 90 so let's look at the difference here uh, all right. 
So our first ball is not. So what we let's let's just simply temporarily shut down this one so we can focus on the first one which is not exactly at the same place right so that's our last frame that's our first frame we just need to move it move this a little bit so here it's there here it's let's 200 refresh no that was the wrong way around so minus and let's compare and let's try that we're getting closer and that was the initial value that we had so I'm a little, a little lost here on what's to do Five, maybe eighteen. Getting closer, twenty-two. Ah, okay, all right. Sorry for that. Now, twenty-two is the number that we have to move if we want our sphere to be exactly at the same position of for our loop. So let's get our sphere back to one hundred. Uh, was it? Wasn't it 100? We've reduced the size of that. So 71. All right. So this one. Once again, shut down this one. So let's move it a little bit further. Fifty, no, two hundred and sixty. Two hundred and seventy, two hundred and seventy one. It seems to be the same. And now we'll, we'll fix that because it seems that it's going a little bit through. No worry about that. Now that everything is lined up have no trouble doing it so right there we're almost there now let's grab or let's grab this our three spheres there and we don't have any oh yeah this one has keyframes on the position so let's make sure that we don't mess up with that, so let's select all, and then we move everything will move accordingly. So setting it to a different angle of view might help you out with that, but let's do it quickly and let's delete that. So I've created a keyframe and dragged it all so it would uh, change the values here without affecting uh, our loop. So right there, it's going to loop perfectly. And maybe we don't want this third ball to appear. Let's make it like drop from here. So it's not going to be here at the start. And let's change the angles because I want this like to already be there. 
So let's uh, make a keyframe here because I just I want to look at this frame here, but I want to change the values here. So that's one way to do it. I'm going to rotate that. So at this point, we have that there. And then I'm going to delete that. And then I'm going to move everything like the, the spheres and the platform. Where's the platform? And this thing. And once again, I'm going to create a keyframe here simply so that we can grab all this and drag it without uh, affecting anything. We're going to control click on this. So we have everything selected. Now let's move this up. And let's look at what we've got. Oh, it seems that we didn't. Uh, yeah, we must delete this keyframe here. And I think I, I did mess up. So let's not do it this way. Let's let's undo until we we were we were on the right path there. So let's see. I want to keep everything, but I just want to change the angle of this. Let's see. Let's bring that over there. And instead of grabbing all, like, let's grab our sphere null. So that's con controls all our spheres. Also has keyframes, so let's uh, grab both and let's bring this up on Z. So that won't mess up the keyframes of the one that's falling. But now we we have to drag in our our little platform also. So minus seven sixty six pixels. So let's grab this null here. And let's go 1996, great year, minus 66, 1930, less of a great year. So something about that, like maybe we can push it a little bit more. And right there, it seems that it falls correctly. So last thing we uh, are going to just like because we don't want to our third ball to pop in when the loop is done we're going to have a little delay and we're going to like as soon as as this and it it really hap like really happens l later in, in the animation that I would like it so but uh, when this is is in this position that's our third sphere here we're going to animate its position on the on the X I think so let's make a keyframe here and grab it further so that'll be its position uh, but let's move this up and let's also move it back like so it comes from right there and right now it's hidden so let's see it drops it just look like it drops from the, from the side here and i would suggest that you like change the angle of the camera and look at it from another angle to place it really well but uh, for this it's going to be all right and we're, we're simply also going to ease those keyframes and uh, ease out but it's easy ease and uh, just for the sake of m making it uh, with some level of gravity there, we're going to make this kind of a curve. And I'm going to purge memory, refresh all that. Let's look at our thing. It falls really fast. I'm not quite sure that it's that fast. I want it to fall from there, but that's a good start. Let's 
put mo m more distance in between those keyframes purge ramp review and let's look at our thing it goes down i'm satisfied with the momentum so ball drops the last ball drops our loop is kind of complete now so we can export that and uh, i know that this has already been a long one but i'm gonna show once more how to how i how i compress my gifs using photoshop because why why not so let's export that now we don't have any glows in there because if we did i wouldn't suggest we do it this way but in this case let's simply um i have this this uh, preset here but it's simply that i went here in the resolution and set it down to half which is going to make it 540 by 540 this is the size of gifs i usually post here so uh let's i'll put that as an avi lossless format default lossless format and let's call it that and let's render it out all right it's not very long and let's open up photoshop so to import a sequence a video it won't work if you just open it normally so we have to go in import video frames to layers and uh, it's gonna take a little while let me find this what we just output is the is it this one I'm not, even, I'm not even sure which one is I, it looks like it, it's this one we just made together so uh, this panel here like sometimes you would have a hard time compressing it under one meg depending on the platform you want to post your gif on something like tumblr accepts uh, only up to one meg so you have to really compress more for this platform twitter now uh, before was three meg maximum now it it's uh, up to 15 megs but it kind of also has its uh, step of compression through when you upload it on Twitter it's also being recompressed again so uh, thinking about that might uh, suggest the best way for you to uh, optimize it before you upload it so let's uh, import it from beginning to the end that's gonna bring in all the frames uh, if we just would check that it would import one of two frames and uh, we can change the number here so that's how we would uh, have less frames in an, an animation that we've rendered so by default all these frames here if you if you don't see this uh, down here this timeline here you can go uh, which one is it timeline just activate it from the window here and uh, we have a play button here so we can look at our animation and the speed of it, it looks pretty fine to, my, to myself and uh, let's like if we, we want to make it slower we can grab all these uh, I've grabbed the first one and going to the last one here shift select and we can click down here and uh, set another time so I'm gonna click other and instead of 0 0.03 seconds I'm gonna make 0 0.06 and that is going to make it like it stutters a little bit more but uh, it's going to be like a, some instead of 15 frames per second it's going to be a, a, a instead of 30 frames per second it's going to be 50 15 frames per second so when uh, you're ready to save let's stop that uh, i'm going to hit control alt shift s so that's going to open up this little panel here this is the optimiz optimization panel. Now, by default, uh, it might not be the same thing on your end. Last, it's based on the last save I made. So, by default, transparency is on. If you uncheck it, it most of the time it will reduce the size. So, uh, I don't see wh why we would need any transparency in this GIF. And it's grayscale. We don't have any colors right now in there, so it's good. We can leave it at grayscale, but uh, usually we can also, 
yeah, we have we do have a little bit of color in the reflection here. So let's uh, set it to perpetual, and uh, 256 color is the maximum in a GIF. And this is like some dithering is gonna compress it. So let's start with no dither. And this is useful when you have gradients and like because this is also uh, some GIF compression, the lossiness that it's called. So let's bring everything to zero. No dithering, no lossiness, 256 color. Uh, this is the best way our GIF can look. So we could export it directly like this and it would be okay for uh, old Twitter maximum size. But uh, let's try it to, to bring it under one meg so we can post it on Tumblr. So one thing that we can do here is optimize to file size. So this will uh, make and sort, it will automatically try to find the best way to bring it down to 1K, but usually it's not really the best way. Uh, so we want to do it manually. So that, what, the, what the hell? We have two colors. We want to have more than two colors. So we can bring it down uh, something around 32, I think, no, something around 64, 128. Now we're, we're still really over it, but uh, let's uh, choose the diffusion pattern for the dithering. And by default, it's at 100% this. And this is the way the preview for the file size here. So let's bring up the lossiness. And as soon as we drop uh, as we put one instead of zero it's it's gonna go down on the file size so that's fine like we don't lose that much quality but you can see if you want to compare here this is our optimized one and this is our fully uh, lossless one so already we're at 1.11 meg so this is the optimized one This is the optimized one. This is the original one. I don't. I don't see why this is. Why? Ah, uh, I don't know. All right. Um. Let's bring this down to ninety nine percent and see how it. Yeah, it's bringing it down. We want it. We just have. A, we're really close now. We can bring this to twenty three. 24 ah 1.9999999 so as long as we're under 2 megs it's okay for tumblr so this is straight up how i would save it for tumblr let's see without the diffusion so this will bring it down a little bit more but now you can see how it affects on each frame it's a little bit noisy but we would be able to put more colors and increase the lossiness depending on uh, the end result that you're aiming for. But I think that in this case, it was a little bit better with the dithering here and at 128 colors and uh, with the dither at 99 and the lossiness around, around 23. Where did I have it at? That it we had 199 that's the perfect number all right so when we're done just save that and we're done so nothing of a big breakthrough here but uh, hey i hope you enjoyed this little session it's uh, sometimes it's really useful to set yourself little goals like just exploring some mathematical principle or just some, uh, sometimes just taking a walk and looking at objects in nature will inspire you but uh, I find it's a really good way to learn new things because while you're trying to get to the end result most of the time things won't necessarily work as you're intended and then we'll have to find solutions and when you actually make it work you're gonna have learned something so it's like 
one stone and three hits, or one hit and three stones, we've learned a little bit of trap code Tao in After Effects, uh, and by looking at Archimedes invention, we, we learn a little bit about mathematics and we've learned a little bit about history. So that's the way I like it. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it as well. So as always, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.